thou shalt judge for thine own self what is right, and God alone is and shall be thy teacher. Lucretia Mott. Lucretia Coffin Mott was a tenacious woman who was not afraid to stand up for what she thought was right. Mott was an advocate for women's rights, yet she was a much more important figure in the abolition movement than she was given credit for. Her efforts were undermined by other abolitionists that were just as active as her. Mott was born in Nantucket, Massachusetts on January 3, 1793. Her father, Thomas Coffin Jr., was a ship captain, and her mother, Anna Folger, was a shopkeeper. Mott was the second of five children and was raised in a family that strongly believed in the ide ideologies of the Society of Friends. This was a Quaker society that pushed equality for women and men. As a child, Mott began to take after her mother and became a part of the Quaker society. She was horrified by slavery and attended Quaker meetings where she would sit and worship in silence for hours. When Mott was 13, she and her sister were sent to a Quaker boarding school, Nine Partners, in Dutchess County, New York. While she studied to become a follower of the passionate Quaker abolitionist Eli Hicks, she developed more of an interest in women's rights and abolition. After graduating, she stayed at Nine Partners and became a teacher's assistant. She was shocked by the unfairness in salary of male teachers to female teachers. Some men were paid as much as three times their women co-workers. In 1809, the Coffin family moved to Philadelphia because Thomas Coffin invested his money into a factory for a new product of the Industrial Revolution. Lucretia followed her family to Philadelphia, where her new husband, James Mott, became her father's business partner. In 1811, at the age of 17, Lucretia Coffin and James Mott were married, and it was here that Mott's life began to shape. Over the next 15 years, Mott would bear six children and raise only five of them, on top of becoming the radical abolitionist she is known as today. Women during this period were not given the right to express their opinion publicly, or rarely at all. Despite this, James Mott always supported his wife to stand up for what she believed in. This different belief of supporting women equally was derived from the Mott's Quaker religious beliefs. Although he is not mentioned in history as much as his wife, James Mott stood proudly by Lucretia's side as she began to change the face of society as we know it today. Lucretia Mott formed the Female Anti-Slavery Society in the year 1833. Five years later, she took it upon herself to organize a boycott for the goods produced by slave labor. With a with the Anti-Slavery Convention of American Women by her side, Mott paired each white woman with a black woman and had them walk out proudly together. These women made a silent statement by walking out and passing the angry mob of 17,000 factory workers who hated everything that they stood for. This never worried Mott because she was so strong in her faith of what was right. Throughout her life, Mott was an active writer, as she traveled throughout the eastern part of the United States spreading her ideas of abolition and women's rights, Mott made a conscious effort to write down all of her speeches, sermons, and public letters so that she could further spread her work around the country and the world. Mott also wrote many personal letters to other abolitionists, such as Frederick Douglass, to make sure she had useful alliances and stayed on the front of the abolition movement. In 1840, after proving herself as an active abolitionist, Mott was chosen as one of six American women to travel to the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London, England. Like the title suggests, the convention sought to abolish slavery all around the world. But when Mott and the other delegates arrived, they were not allowed into the convention hall because the male delegates didn't want abolition and women's rights to be associated. The women were forced to sit behind a curtain and were not allowed to participate in the discussion. In protest, the American male delegates, such as William Lloyd Garrison, joined the women delegates behind the curtain. The 
World Anti-Slavery Convention proved that Lucretia Mott was truly devoted to the abolition movement, even though she was never really given the credit she deserved for her work. As she got older, Mott continued to travel, speak, and contribute her energies to a variety of causes. For years, she was vice president of the Universal Peace Union. In 1870, she was elected president of the Pennsylvania Peace Society, an office she held until her death. Surrounded by her children and grandchildren, Mott died of pneumonia at her home in Chettleham, Pennsylvania on November 11, 1880. She was later buried in the Quaker Fairhill Burial Ground in Northern Philadelphia. As history is taught today, important movements or changes in the American society are mostly associated with one person or group as the face of that event. Even though she was not one of the most active members of the abolition movement, society did not choose Maud as the face. However, after research on this time period, it is obvious how large of a role Mott had on the abolishment of slavery. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old, Thou shalt treat thy slaves kindly, thou shalt prepare them for freedom at a future day. But I say unto you, Hold no slaves at all. Proclaim liberty now throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. Lucretia Mott